we're going to be talking about linear regression and doing y on x. Now, this is what happens when you're looking at a bunch of data and you want to try to model it with some sort of linear fit. We're going to do something called linear regression. Technically, I think your calculator does something called linear least square, so it's trying to you know, minimize the distance, but we don't actually have to worry so much about what your calculator does in the background. You can actually calculate this by hand if you like uh, on your IAs. You can sit there and do a bunch of columns, but I'm just trying to show you how you can use your calculator to do this and also just the idea behind it. So. The concept here is that we're trying to look at a bunch of data and we're going to try to model it with some equation that goes like y equals, well, remember what a linear graph looks like, maybe like mx plus c, where m is the gradient and c is the y-intercept. I mean, you could also see it as, you know, sometimes people call it ax plus b. It's, actually, it's the same thing. We're just trying to model it like this, okay? So this is the idea, at least, is to do something like this, to try to get some equation like this. So this is the idea, something, you know, get an equation, oops, get in the form, you know, y equals mx plus b, or, you know, mx plus, it basically, y equals some number times x plus something. So let's just take a look at what could happen. So what if, I don't know, I have a bunch of data like this, like a bunch of dots like this. And I can say, all right, so here's my bunch of data points, and say, okay, well, you know what, it looks like I can probably draw a straight line through this data. Maybe a straight line goes something like this. This would be the, the idea behind it. You take a bunch of data points and say, well, it kind of goes like this. So it's useful for modeling, it's useful for making predictions, but watch out. Because you can still make things, remember we talked about, uh, I have another video we're talking about this. Let's say you made a guess somewhere like here. This here would be called an interpolation because it's something that's within the data. And it's something called, um, I mean, so that's interpolation. There's maybe something way outside like this to use it to predict. I mean, that's called an extrapolation. And maybe that's not relevant, we'll have to see, right? So it all depends. So you use this to sort of, you can make it, you know, you can maybe interpolate or extrapolate. You basically use this, but there's all there's always limits to this. So, uh, I mean, one pro tip is watch out because just because two things seem to be correlated doesn't mean that there is a causation re uh, relationship. So, I like these. You can look up. There's really funny graphs you can look up, but like, you know, correlation does not be in mean causation. So, I like this in here. Divorce rates in the U.S. state of Maine compared to the per capita consumption of margarine, like some sort of butter offshoot. And I like how they seem to be correlated, but it doesn't mean they're causing each other. I hope not, at least. Margarine has to do with divorces. So, keep in mind, haha, but it's it's true. Correlation doesn't mean causation. These This right here means they seem to be correlated. It means that if you know x, you can get y. See, that's sort of what it tells you here. Given an x value, you can guess what y is. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to pass through all the points. right? What's best, though, is if it does pass through what's called the mean point. So we would call this, uh, the mean point could be written like, uh, like this. We could say it's the average x and the average y. So that's best if it passes through there. I'm pretty sure your calculator, when it does it, it uses the mean point. That's how it figures it out. So... Let's go ahead and talk about something called Pearson's Product Moment Correlation Coefficient, which is sometimes called PMCC. Some people just call it R, but you got to watch out because depending on which class you're in, we have to specify what R is. Now, in HL, we have a distinction between the population and the sample, but in this case right here, we're just going to keep things nice and simple. We're just going to call it R, R for the Pearson's Correlation Coefficient. Now, R can be, uh, I mean, we can say it's, uh, between 0 and 1, at least the absolute value of R will be. Okay, it'll be between 0 and 1. So for example, R equals 0 is the worst fit. R equals 1 is the best fit. So just to try to tell you, and R can be negative. It just means it's, uh, you know, the graph goes down. So just so you know, this is also possible, okay? So these are the important things right here. We can say that it's between zero and one. So what do we mean by this? Let me just show you a few different examples. Maybe I can just make up some here. I'll just do some X's and some Y's here, just to try to show you uh, some kind of, like what we might expect for R. Because see, when you have a fit like this, you can have some, some measure of how good of a fit it is. So that's what this Pearson's correlation coefficient tells you, this R value. Okay, this is the key here. This is the, the really important thing actually is right here. We use something called R. This is the important part right here, in fact. So R. 
So we can tell something about r here. We can say, oh, r equals 0 is the worst, r equals 1 is the best. Let's see what I mean by this. So uh, let me just draw a bunch of data points. So maybe I'll do something that's like, uh, like a big shotgun blast of data points like this. You could put this into your calculator and force it to do a linear regression, and it will. It'll be like, got it. That graph is like, uh, it's like this. Now this would be a really bad example. So I don't know, maybe R here could be, let me just try to guess what R could be here. So in this case here, maybe R is like, I mean, it'll be something really bad. Like, I don't know, maybe 0 0.1, which means there's like, there's like uh, very weak or like no correlation really. Now keep in mind um, what this tells you. You could then conclude from this. So let's say this is your IA or something, your internal assessment, you're doing some data and you get this as your result. It doesn't mean you failed, it just means no, this thing just doesn't seem to be related. I've had lots of my students actually wonder like, oh God, have I done something wrong? Do I have to redo? I was like, no, 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 you can conclude. Well, that means there's no correlation. I guess I'll have to do something else with the data because this doesn't seem to work. That's fine. Uh, let me show you this. Uh, maybe I'll give you something like, um, so I mean, that was like no correlation. I can give you some sort of weak positive correlation maybe. I'll try to do that. So I'll show you something like that. So maybe like that one I gave you before. Maybe something like this. So kind of goes up like this. Do you see? So it's maybe a little bit better. I mean, keep in mind these numbers, the, the drawings at least are not exact, but it's just to try to give you some idea of what it could be. Notice, by the way, the graph goes up, so R is positive. The graph goes up, so R is positive. Mm -hmm. In this case, maybe R is, uh, I don't know, maybe it's like 0 0.6. So it's like there's a weak, you know, positive correlation. So there is some correlation. So maybe you could use this to make some conclusions. Maybe. Uh, let me show you another example, maybe. Maybe I'll show you one with like, uh, oh, I know. Show one like this. Something like that. So your data points all seem to go down like that. So that's like a really, really good fit. So maybe they go downwards and I don't know, I'm just going to try to draw a line through it. Something like that. Remember, a line doesn't have to pass through all the points. It has to pass at the mean point, but something like this. Something like that might be your graph. Here you might say, oh, R might be really close to 1. So maybe R is like 0 0.9. But watch out, because the graph goes down, we make it minus maybe 0 0.9. So we could say like a strong negative correlation, for example. So what does that mean? That means um, we could very likely use this to make some predictions, right? This will be very accurate to make some interpolations for sure, and maybe even some extrapolations. So again, what do we learn about this? R equals zero is really bad. R equals one is like perfect. And well, you can have anything in the middle, just to show you. All right, let's go ahead and talk about how we can do this on our calculator like this. <laughs> Um, so it's quite straightforward. Put stuff into list. That's the idea. That's step one. And then step two is do a linear regression. So from the TI Inspire, add a new page, do a list, put in your X and Y. Don't forget to name your columns, at least if you're on the TI Inspire. It's really important to name your columns. Uh, on the 84, go stat, edit, and put in L1 and L2. Those will be your X's and Y's. Now to do your linear regression, well, on the Inspire, you go menu and stats, do calculations, say linear regression, MX plus B. Keep in mind, they have all these different symbols, you know, versions they use. You can do MX plus C, AX plus B, MX plus B. It's all the same thing. We're saying get me some number times X plus something. Keep in mind, it's all actually the same thing. T84, you can do the same thing, stat, calc, linrig. You can also visualize it on the T84 uh, and also on the Inspire. On the Inspire, here's how you do it. You do data and stats, you pick your X and Y and do some stuff here. Let me show you with an example. So I have a fun example here. Uh, I thought it was at least. Uh, so maximum speed on a boat. Uh, so maximum speed of a boat, sorry, on a lake with a different number of paddlers is recorded. So you have, you know, maybe four people paddling the boat. So then you can go, you know, 8.7 kilometers per hour. And if you have six people, you go 10.3. And 10 people, you go 12 and 14. You go faster and faster. So the whole idea is let's do a linear regression equation in the form y equals mx plus c. Let's see, haha, if we can do it. So step one, get out my calculator. And depending on what you have, your idea is you got to put this into a list. So in mine, at least, I'm going to say, give me a list. I'm going to call this one right here X. It's going to be really important. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll call it uh, rowers. Wouldn't that be nicer? At least uh, this case here. So row 
Wars. There we go. And then uh, my next one, I'll call it speed, maybe. This way, at least it's really, really clear to me what it is. So rowers and speed. All right. So what I'm going to do now is actually just try to go ahead and type in all this stuff here. So let me just go ahead and go four, six, ten. Whoa, what happened here? I don't know. Six, ten, fourteen, eighteen. And I go up here and I say, all right, I'll just put in all the values here. So 8.7, 10.3. I just got to see my keyboard here. 12.6, 14.2. 15.9. Boom. All right, so what do I need to do now? Well, now I go to menu and I say, give me some statistics on it. I want to do some calculations. I want linear regression. Now you can have a thing with the X first, or you can have a thing with the X second. It doesn't matter, but I'll just choose the first one. It looks more like what I'm used to seeing. What do you want for your X's? I'm going to move to the right, right arrow here and say, I want rowers for my X. Press tab. What do I want for my Y list? I say speed. That's all I need. Everything else is good. I say go. It gives me my equation here, which is nice. So that means I'll do it to three significant figures. So 0.502x, well, I'll write that down, okay? So Y equals, I'm gonna do it in uh, blue maybe. Y equals 0 0.502 times X. Let's see here. And then uh, plus B, so plus 7.11, let's just say. I mean, you could say 1, 2, but I'll just say 7.11. Plus 7.11. So there's my regression equation. And by the way, it might help to know, oh, never mind, it asks us the next question here. What's the R value? Is this a good fit? So we can see that by the R value. Do you see it's 0.993? So that tells me that R equals... That'll be an important one here. So the R value is approximately 0 0.993. So you tell me, is this a good fit? Darn right it is. It's almost one. All right. So what does this tell you? This is a strong positive correlation. So what does that tell you? That tells you that the more rowers you add, the faster you go. All right. So that's what it tells you here. So it tells you it's a strong positive correlation. So now, you often have to then use it to predict something. So let's do the maximum speed if there's 12. Do you notice 12 wasn't one of the things? In other words, what we're doing here, we're doing an interpolation. So we're guessing a value, but that's still within the data here. So this is an interpolation. So I want 12 rowers. So what do I do? I use my equation. Remember, y is the speed. So I want to know y when I already know x. I'm going to say 0.502 times now x is 12 plus 7.11, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to do that on my calculator here. So new page maybe. I say great, give me this. So I want 0.502 times 12. All that answer plus 7.11. I can see from this the speed should be about 13.1. Okay, so it should be about 13.1 kilometers per hour. So that tells me, okay, so that's about how fast it should go. Does it seem reasonable? Yeah, it's somewhere in between these two numbers. So it seems to be reasonable, doesn't it? So that's a good interpolation. By the way, remember I said you can visualize the data? Watch this. I can say, uh, give me a new page. I can say, give me a data and statistics here. You just got to tell it what's what. So I'm going to say, oh, this is uh, on the x-axis of rowers. On the y-axis is the speed. You can say, hey, look at that. And I can even say, hey, can you give me the regression? So I'm going to do uh, actions, I think it is. No, where is Analyze, that's it. Analyze, give me a regression. Give me a linear regression. Boom, so it sort of plots it for me. And can you notice then at 12, it looks like it's around, yeah, 13 point something. So it seems about right. You see, I'm just trying to show you this seems about right. Now, just for fun, this is a bit ridiculous. I just want to show you something else. What we're doing now is trying to do what's called an extrapolation. Okay, so this is what we're trying to do now. We're trying to take this and see if there's any limits to it. So extrapolation. And there's a danger in doing this, right? Because we're going to see this is going to be ridiculous. So how many rowers would you need to go to the speed of sound? Which, by the way, Mach 1, which is what it's called. Uh, it's related to this thing called a Mach angle. We talk about that in physics. But let's say you have to go 1,225 kilometers per hour. Well, that's a bit ridiculous, but let's just do the math. 
So see, I want to set my speed, which is my y value. I'll set that to 1225. That's going to equal 0 0.502 times x, which I don't know, plus 7.11. Remember, x is the number of paddlers here, or rowers, sorry. So actually, I should have used the word paddlers. That's maybe more accurate. They don't have to be rowing. I should say that here as well. Paddlers. You get the idea, though. All right, so if I do this right here, uh, let's actually figure this out. All right, so I can uh, do minus 7.11. You know what? I'll just do this all in the calculator all at once here. So I'm going to take this uh, 1225. I'm going to subtract from that 7.11 because that's going to get me what uh, 0.502x is. So I'm going to divide this then by 0.502. That'll give me my value, which is 2,426. So I need... 2004, wait, was it 2,426 rowers or paddlers? Isn't that crazy? So obviously this isn't uh, important here. This is actually a little bit ridiculous here. So clearly this is ridiculous. Right? This is not how we're going to be using this. That's why there is a danger in extrapolation, right? I mean, this isn't reasonable at all. Of course, you can't go to speed of sound with more rowers. <laughs> well, maybe, but but no, I don't think so. So that's why, I mean, just an example of the dangers of extrapolation. But this is important because when you're doing your own models, you have to think about, hey, uh, where is the limit to this thing? In fact, that's maybe a good thing to talk about right here. So why should you care? Well, this will tell you, this linear fit at least, how good of a fit it is. But also, I mean, it's it's. I think it's really helpful in a statistics type of IA if you're going to do that, because you can take a look and see, well, I can use it to make some guesses, and maybe those guesses are ridiculous. So there are limitations to your model. Your model doesn't work everywhere. In this case, my model probably works for, you know, a low number of rowers or paddlers, but it probably doesn't work for any higher numbers. So that's something important to consider.